Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Got a rain day outside, so I need to turn my attention to uh, something that needs to be done um, as far as the transmission builds. Uh, I do have a box in here from a company, so we're going to open this up and check this out also. Um, what I want to do is, I was watching, I've been watching a lot of videos um, as far as doing 47 and 48 RE rebuilds. Uh, and there's a guy on there, it's Bronco Carl 92, I believe. And I watched a 48 RE build that he did. And he has this little stand that he made that I noticed um, to help hold his transmission up and to allow him to keep everything nice and level while he has it flipped upside down, basically, uh, on the top of the bell housing and then at the back of the tail shaft to allow the transmission to stay nice and level uh, while he's taking, you know, because everything comes apart on the valve body side or on the pan side, so you need to flip it upside down. So I saw this on his channel. Um, it's not my idea, but I, I liked what he had going on. So we're going to attempt tonight to make one of these. Um, it, it, it's pretty, pretty simple build really, but there's a couple of different ways where you could go about it to change some things. I don't know that I'm going to do the entire thing. I may just do the back side of it. So, uh, but first before we get started, we're going to go ahead and get uh, this box opened up and see what's inside there. Garen transmission. All right, what I picked up from Garen was a billet input shaft. This is a 300M uh, single piece forging. Most of your factory pieces are a two piece and this spline right here is where a lot of times it strips out. It still does have the factory size 23 spline input shaft and a 62 spline uh, clutch drum. So, and it does have the uh, OE sealing or sealing capabilities and it does have the upgraded oiling on it. So this is just one of their input shafts or their economy input shafts for the 47 uh, RE and these come in right about $485. And then I also went ahead and went with the billet flex plate from Garen. Uh, this is SFI rated and it is dated right there. I just didn't want a chance putting on a factory uh, flex plate so I went ahead and opted for the billet flex plate and then I do have ARP hardware to hold it on the crank. So with that stuff unboxed, let's go ahead and get that uh, 47 up here on the bench and um, see if we can't get this stand made. All right, what I have is a piece of two by two by three sixteenths, a piece of one and a three quarter uh, by eighth inch. Um, and then I have some all thread. This is just half inch all thread by 13 thread pitch. And then I have a piece of uh, one and a half by three sixteenths here also. What we had was this piece going across the back here, kind of something like this, using these two eyelets on either side with the all thread coming up and through like that. So that'll be able to level across and then your transmission will sit here and here. Now me, I don't know that you really need this piece going across just like this. And then to tie everything together, he had uh, these two pieces, two pieces of strap steel going across like that. So me, I, I don't know if you really, if it's necessary to have this piece of going across here, but it is, you know, it would be nice to be able to take and have that piece here, either like that or like that, whatever. Um, he did have a hole drilled in here, so this would all come apart. I'm thinking I might just uh, cut my pieces to length and I may drill holes, um, but the, I didn't quite get a good enough picture. I did to see how this piece was placed. If this was sitting flat on a table, you're gonna have your nuts on both sides, unless he had it like that. And then the strap was welded this way. So uh, that's what I got going on tonight. I'm gonna kind of just uh, play with it, see what I'm gonna do. Um, allow me to take this transmission and roll it over and have valve body side up and uh, be able to work on it that way. So I want to grab the level first and go off of here over to an eyelet and measure down and over here and measure down to see how long these pieces of all thread need to be in the eyelets. So I want to go, if you look across here, 
it's not really it's got an arch to it and your highest point is right here so i'm going to measure both pieces from that highest point uh from level down to that eyelet and see and, and add an inch to go all the way through <coughs> the, the casting of the uh, the transmission housing we'll grab underneath the uh the boss there that's actually the uh, mount for your tv cable You're looking right about fourteen and three quarters inches. So if we cut them, probably about fifteen and a half. Cut both of them about fifteen and a half inches. We should be pretty good. Now, if you want to mount it the other way, you would just take two inches off of that. So you cut them thirteen and a half inches. If you would want to mount them this way, and then this edge right here would be where you would weld your strap to versus like that. I don't think I'm either gonna, I don't think I'm gonna do anything other than put this on there. We'll see how much rigidity it has. Um, it might be a good idea to go ahead and put this piece across here too and then weld <clears throat> from here to there. Um, we'll just have to see how this flexes once I get it made up and on the transmit, bolted onto the transmission. All right, with both of those bolted on there, I'm going to go ahead and take this and drop it in place. And then I'll just measure in from wherever edge I want. And uh, we'll just go ahead and weld that on there like that. Is how I think I want to do it. All right, with that all welded in place, it's still just a little bit warm. I think I'm going to go ahead and put this piece across the top here. Um, there's just a lot of movement. More so than what I like in that. You can see how that's flexing back and forth. So I think I'll go ahead and put uh, this cross piece on here and then I'll go ahead and put those cross pieces across the top. And I think that'll give it just a lot more rigidity as far as everything bolted together uh, on the two bosses here and then up there on the two bell housing bolts right there. All right, I got that front piece bolted on there. I have do have these braces here cut. Uh, I got that one beveled just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and weld that in there and weld that in there. And then uh, that should be pretty good then. So I'll catch back up with you here in just a minute after I get this stuff all welded together. Alrighty, there we go. Everything is all bolted and welded together. Like I said, I've got the all thread. I welded that in there and then just bolted it down here to this uh, boss this casted boss on the the housing itself this is the uh where the bracket goes for the tv cable and i come across and i just welded another piece of or i just have another piece of angle iron bolted to the two top bolts of the bell housing two straps as you can see there same thing on this side use a disc boss casting over here i think tomorrow we will uh we will start tearing this down the only thing i'm not really going to particularly care for is if you look height wise um, that is going to be pretty tall uh, taking it off so I might have to get me a stool or grab that uh, stool up there that platform and put it on the ground to be able to stand because my bench is pretty much almost too tall to be able to do this job so um, going to be a, a learning process for sure but uh, I think we can get it accomplished so uh, tomorrow night, I think we'll start tearing this transmission down and uh, see how all the clutches look inside. If the clutches are good, um, obviously they're not going to stay in there. I'll use those to uh, rebuild this transmission. Um, I pretty much have everything I need right now. The only thing I'm lacking is a torque converter. Um, and I'm still not 100% certain what I'm going to do there as far as using that triple disc, uh, using that single disc, or... I did find out that triple disc that I have, that is a Garin torque converter after talking with them, sending some pictures and showing it to them. So um, cut and cleaned is $350 and then on top of that, whatever it may or may not need, but I do have to get it there too. So shipping, um, I don't know what shipping would be to Iowa to Garin. We'll just have to see what all that stuff is going to cost. So uh, with that being said, I think that's pretty much going to do it tonight. If you don't mind, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already done so, and we'll talk to you guys later on.